Well, I think the first prevention tip for consumers with tax identity theft awareness is to file as soon as you can. Um, claim that refund if you're owed one. Get your tax filing in as yourself under your name with your information before any identity thief can do so. Um, and that's really important and one of the best preventions to tax identity theft awareness. So um, if you are a later filer for whatever reason, you don't have all your information or maybe your just life doesn't allow you to get that filed early, um, you can go on to the DOR website and check to see if someone has filed taxes in your name if you want to know beforehand. But tax identity theft, what is it? You know, this is actually when someone has filed taxes using your information um, and tries to get your refund. But the other side of tax, ident tax identity theft is when someone's using your social security number for employment and then you file your taxes but you don't claim all the work because you didn't know someone else was out there working under your information. Um, and then the, the government triggers that and, and lets you know and that's the second mode of being alerted to tax identity theft. Are we, and are we seeing this in Wisconsin? We have certainly over the years seen cases of tax identity theft in both forms. Um, so it is a real thing here. It's a real thing nationally and there are things you can do to monitor it throughout the year or prevent. As it relates to monitoring if someone is employed in your name is you can work with the Social Security Administration on, a, on an annual basis check to see what kind of earnings you have and that relates to the employment. So you would be aware of and notify that someone is working using your information. Um, you can run a credit report if you haven't done so. We really encourage consumers to do that on an annual basis. That doesn't tell you necessarily that you have tax identity theft, but it lets you know if you are a victim of identity theft because you'll <laughs> see different extensions of credit, maybe different housing situations um, with rentals and things, different addresses listed, maybe other automotive, automotive vehicles, uh, loans out there, so uh, utility bills, uh, reporting if things aren't being paid. So a credit report can lead you to a lot of information as well. And then again, I mentioned earlier, checking with the tax, the agencies, the Department of Revenue to see if someone's filed taxes in your name. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to think that that would even happen, first and foremost. Right. Um, but uh, uh, as we've talked on other things, data privacy is so important. It's easy to get out there, especially when it gets in the wrong hands. It can be spread to many, many different people. Uh, when we're looking at the doing the prep uh, and, and talking mm -hmm. on the fraud on that side of things, uh, you know, choosing the right person to do it or doing it yourself or whatever, uh, what, uh, what are some tips there we're going to talk about? Well, those pretty much are your choices, right? Hiring somebody to do that, uh, your tax preparation, or you do it yourself or maybe with a friend or family member. Um, and so there are things to protect yourself on both sides. If you're going to do the tax preparation yourself, it's making sure your computer is ready to do so or that you are at a location that's safe to do so. It's not a great idea to take all your tax receipts and forms and go to the local coffee shop and use their public Wi-Fi. Well, why not? The coffee's so good, Michelle. <laughs> right. The coffee can be great. Go pick up a cup and take it home. <laughs> um, but it's important not to use that public Wi-Fi to transmit your data. You never know who's hovering around or what video cameras may be there, really picking up your personal information. You don't want to get stuck in a man-in-the-middle situation where someone is monitoring every keystroke that you're doing through the public Wi-Fi when you really you think you're using that coffee shop's Wi-Fi and you're not. Um, again, a public library situation can be a, a problem because those are public computers and you don't know what they've done to maintain those. Um, but then there is the piece of hiring somebody. You're now giving someone access to your information and you need to be confident about the way that they are going to maintain that information, protect it, transmit it, what do they do to secure their computers. We've certainly seen data breaches that have resulted from preparation services and you want to know how they're storing it, who they share the information with um, because they may be part of a larger conglomerate where they have privacy policies where that information will be shared. Um, so you need to check out your preparer and really understand. 
And then there's the group of preparers that might just be scam artists and fraudsters. And they're there to capture all your information um, and they may transmit those tax files without your authorization and then have that refund redirected elsewhere other than to you. And we have seen some cases of that in Wisconsin in the past. Um, years, so you want to be sure that you vet your tax preparer, that they're known, trusted, and reliable. Yeah, I'm thinking there's probably a lot more um, advertising out there about people doing them online, so, you know, mm -hmm. signing into an online for, I mean, how do you really guarantee the well, safety and how, how would a consumer, you know, making that decision on if we're going to use something online versus buying the software, doing it at home, or... Uh, right. I know that's a really tough question, but it is incredibly hard. We, all we can tell consumers is to do your research and really analyze um, the information that you get back, and you have to ask questions. Um, you have to be assertive and read those privacy policies and understand what it is that you might be purchasing or using for an online system. So go ahead and look at ratings of it. You know, Google that with complaints or um, other information to be sure. Check it out with Consumer Protection. Check it out with um, the Better Business Bureau to be sure that you've done some due diligence um, and can feel comfortable with your selection. Talk to friends and family, know um, what has happened for them or what they've used. Check to see if there's been breaches in the past with those systems. Yeah, and I'm thinking too, even if you're working with somebody, um, I've worked in the past, I've, I tend to just black out all the information if I'm sending a digital file. I'm mm -hmm. still paranoid at, at that and I just, I feel like that's the only way to really uh, do it. They may be looking for a specific thing, but you can, you can kind of black that out or something. Just But taking the extra steps, I think, is really what we're driving home here. Uh, if people want to learn more about uh, overall tax safety, uh, uh, some of the tips you talked about today, where can we find those? You can go to our website at datcp.wi.gov. We'll have information on like refund anticipation, loans, broad categories, j basic identity theft information and protection. Or call our hotline at 1-800-422-7128. Michelle, always a pleasure. Get your taxes in, folks. Don't wait till the last minute. <laughs> Absolutely. Not a good idea. All right. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, we'll take a quick break. You are watching Talking Fitchburg.